Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Ladies and gentlemen, fire up your emulators and get those Domino's pizza on order. It's time for our, another episode of our retro gaming series, Retro OS. Sponsor Commander 1990, Chief Editor of the Simple Gaming Reviews here. In this episode, we turn the clocks back to 1988 as we review Factor 5's first game. Can this game make its mark on history, or should this game be long forgotten? And without further ado, let's kick up the nostalgia and let's find out. Lucas' Star Wars franchise is a juggernaut to the film industry today. The franchise starts in 1977 when the first film of the original trilogy, dubbed A New Hope, was released. The film attracted a worldwide phenomenon, racking in a massive $775 million at the box office. You had that right guys, $775 million. Fun fact for you guys, did you know that Lucas had a massive bet with the director of E.T. the extraterrestrial Steven Spielberg? George Lucas was so convinced that A New Hope would be a flop, the two directors made a bet that the movie were to be bigger than the movie that Spielberg was directing at the time. The Jaws sequel, Close Encounters, Lucas would have to give 4.5 of the film's earnings to Spielberg. Of course, Lucas lost said bet, and the film's revenue received a massive all the land size 41 million disturbance in the force. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. The information was sourced by all time tens. Links in the channel and the description. Of course, the franchise had a lot of video games adaptations. Rogue Squadron was one of them. This classic fan favourite was originally for the Windows PC on December 4th, 1998. The game was then ported to the N64 on January 10th, 1989. The game is set between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. You play as one of the most recognisable characters in the entire franchise. Luke Skywalker, commander of a group of elite rebel pilots known as Rogue Squadron, as you take the fight against the Galactic Empire in 16 missions across various planets in the Star Wars universe. The accessibility scores are as follows. To kick off proceedings, visibility give it 7. So let's start off with the biggest glaring problem that I have with this game. When you're using the radar, filming ships will be represented with green dots. Empire units will be displayed as red dots on the radar. You know as well as I do, a red and green colour contrast is a definite no-no when it comes to colourblind players. However, the rest of the on-screen elements are pretty accessible. A cone pointing in the direction of your nearest objectives will appear all the time. The wider the cone, the closer you are to that objective, so you should be able to keep track on your objectives as a mission progresses. So you're playing with a visual impairment, which should be able to play this game with no issues, but different colour contrasts when determining friend from foe could make this game a lot more accessible. Next on the agenda, on ability, it gave a 10. This game has a subtitle function which can be enabled and disabled via the game's options menu. That way, a hearing impaired player can immerse himself in a mission as it plays out. Also on the mission briefing screen, you can press the Y button for the briefing and a text form, allowing you to understand what each mission entails. So a player with a hearing impairment will be able to play this game with no issues. Next up, mobility is a sky high 11. On the PC version where we use to test it, the keyboard and mouse controls can be fully custom to suit your impairment. However, a keyboard and mouse controls are not recommended. I mean, to be fair, it's an X64 game we're talking about here. Luckily enough, this game has full controller support out of the box, and then an Xbox One controller works like a charm. When using your controller, the bottom layers can be fully customized to suit your impairment. So a mobility impaired player will be able to play this game with absolutely no issues. Next up, gameplay is going to 10. For its time, this game is an excellent arcade style dogfight simulator. With a grand total of 16 missions, 3 of which are unlockable, 
This game has a fair bit of lifespan for an N64 era standards. When a certain mission is cleared for the first time, additional spacecraft will be available for that particular mission. This makes you want to replay the missions that you've flown in, but in various other spacecraft. Also, the medal system also incentivizes you to play replay missions. They give medals like rankings. At the end of every mission you clear, you are graded on your performance. This is done through variables such as enemies defeated, and clear time, and overall accuracy. This mechanic gets you playing as you strive for that sweet sweet gold medal. The game's graphics holds up pretty well, despite the game's age. Sure it may not have the features you would normally expect from a modern PC game, like dynamic lighting, anti-aliasing, anti-aliasing, definition 1, a technique that was used to convert a low resolution graphic to a high resolution monitor. This is done by removing the jagged edges of the graphics to make them a lot more presentable. What this does makes the graphics look better and more consistent, but it's very intensive on your PC's hardware. Or even HD resolution support. It still looks pretty gorgeous even for N64 era standards. In summary, Rogue Star Wars Rogue Squadron is a timeless classic in its own right. The story is engaging, the combat is very smooth even for N64 standards. Due to the game's age, it doesn't require a lot of horsepower here in your PC to run it. Hell, even a laptop can run this game. And this game is currently under a tenor on Steam. So if you're a Star Wars fan, and are looking for a low spec, cheap 3D arcade style action game to play on the run of the, the Christmas period, this game could be an excellent choice. And the overall score is a highly respectable 95%. This is Spartan Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disabling Review signing out, and I will see you in the next review.